A nebulizer uses air pressure to turn liquid medicine into a mist that is then inhaled through a face mask or mouthpiece. The nebulizer is comprised of the following parts. A compressor, tubing, nebulizer chamber, and a mask. A mouthpiece may also be used instead of a mask. The first step in using a nebulizer is to prepare the compressor. Place the compressor on a clean table or counter and plug in the machine. If you're preparing medication, fill a syringe with the medication. Be sure to remove all bubbles. Place the medication in the nebulizer chamber. You may need to add normal saline to the nebulizer chamber so that there are 4 milliliters of liquid in total. Normal saline is sterile salt water you can buy at the drugstore. For premixed medicine, begin by opening the nebule. Put the medicine into the nebulizer chamber. Now connect one end of the tubing to the nebulizer chamber and the other end to the compressor. Then attach the face mask to the nebulizer chamber. Next, place the mask over the nose and mouth. Be sure it's firmly sealed. Turn on the compressor. A fine mist of medication enters the mask. Breathe slowly through the mouth. After every three or four normal breaths, take a deep breath. When the mist stops coming out of the mask or mouthpiece, Tap the nebulizer three or four times to see if there's any more mist. When the mist stops, the medication has been delivered. Remove the mask or the mouthpiece and turn off the compressor. Use a damp cloth to remove any residual medication on the face. After taking the medication, it's important to rinse with water, gargle and spit out. Inhaled steroids left in the mouth may upset the normal balance and allow yeast to grow. One of the most important points to remember when using a nebulizer is not to take the mask off too early, before the misting is finished. This usually lasts around 10 to 15 minutes. When using a nebulizer in a healthcare environment, be sure to wear protective clothing. You should also be familiar with the criteria for the prevention of other communicable respiratory infections, such as TB and SARS. If at all possible, it's best to avoid the risk of infection entirely by using an MDI with a spacer. There have also been some new developments in the area of nebulizers, with the launch of the first breath-actuated nebulizer. Unlike conventional nebulizers that emit a continuous output, new breath-actuated devices only provide output when the patient inspires. To clean the nebulizer, begin by taking apart the tubing, mask, and chamber. Rinse the mask and nebulizer chamber in warm water. Shake out the extra water gently. Leave the nebulizer chamber and mask to air dry on a paper towel or a clean dish towel. Once daily, use mild dish soap to wash the nebulizer chamber and mask. Rinse both well in warm water and leave to air dry on a paper towel or clean cloth towel. Twice weekly, the mask and nebulizer chamber should be soaked in one cup of white vinegar and three cups of water for 30 minutes. Afterward, rinse the mask and nebulizer chamber in warm water. Dry both on a paper towel or a clean dish towel. It's not necessary to clean the nebulizer tubing. If you detect water in the tubing, turn on the compressor and blow out the water. Nebulizer chambers, meant to be used more than once, typically have a six-month shelf life before replacement is required. And finally, if using a breath-actuated nebulizer, it can be cleaned by boiling for 20 minutes. <laughs>